Now in this example, we are going to be constructing a histogram, or actually two histograms. Now a histogram is a bar graph, but it is a bar graph that represents data of numerical values. The previous examples were bar graphs that represented certain characteristics like letter grades from a professor or student opinion about something. But when you have numerical data, those numbers have to be represented using a number line, or more precisely, specifically, an x-axis. So this problem states, suppose the following set of data represent the scores of a quiz given for this section of the course. And then we have these two, uh, two scenarios here. A, construct a frequency histogram that has seven classes. And then B, construct a frequency histogram that has four classes. So a couple of things to point out is seven classes here for letter A, and then four classes here for letter B. A class or classes are groups of data divided up into equal width categories. And the width of the categories determines the width of the bars that we're going to be drawing. So the first thing we want to do, and I'm just going to write it down up here, step one, is we want to go ahead and we want to draw our x-axis. So we'll do that. Now, in theory, a x-axis or a number line goes off into infinity in either direction. And we certainly don't need an infinitely long number line. We just need a number line that goes from a certain span, a certain interval. So we want it to go from the smallest data value to at least the largest data value of our data set. So as we look at our data set here, these quiz grades, the smallest data value is right here. This is 2. So our number line has to is going to start with two. So I'm just going to count this off by twos. Our largest data value is 20. So our number line has got to go at least to 20, maybe a little bit more, depending upon the size of the, the width of the bars. So that's going to be our next step. Step two is we're going to determine the class width. And again, a class is where the, where the data is divided up into these equal width categories. Now, since I have a span from 2, our lowest, smallest data value, all the way up to 20. That's a span of 18. It goes from 2 to 20. That's a span of 18, or you just subtract the smallest data value from the largest. So I have this span of 18. Now I want to take that span right there, and I want to divide it up into seven classes. If I have seven classes, that means I want seven bars to represent my data. Each class represents a bar. So if I want seven classes, then I'm going to divide this by seven. Now, 18 divided by seven, that's approximately 2.57. Now, we do not want to have a width that is a fractional amount. We want it to land on a whole number. So we always round this up to the next whole value, and that's going to be three. So the class width for letter A here is going to be 3. I'm just going to write it in here. If I have a class width of 3, then I'll be able to represent this data with 7 classes. The next thing I want to do is now go ahead and make the distribution table the list that represents this data. So I'll start it over here. I'm going to put down here are the quiz scores and then the frequency. And I like to shorthand it as FREQ. -E 
Now I'm going to start off with the smallest data value, which is 2, 2 on our number line. And of course, 2 is our smallest data value. So I'm just going to put in 2. Then I count off 3 for my next class. And that gives me 5. Then I count off again. That gives me 8. And you could see from our number line here, if I start at 2, then I count off 3, 1, 2, 3, and I'm at 5, and I count off again, 1, 2, 3. That's our class width. That's 8. And I count off again, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to be at 11. And I keep doing that. I don't have to go any further than 20 because that's our, that's our largest data value. This is known as our lower, lower class limit. The lower class limit is the smallest data value in a class. It's the smallest data value that belongs in a bar. The other value, I'm going to put in 4. That's the largest data value that goes into a bar. So then I could count off 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So those are our classes. This is the lower class limit for the first class. This is the upper class limit for the first class. The difference between consecutive lower class limits from one class to the next is our class width. 2 to 5, that's 3. 5 to 8, that's 3. 8 to 11, that's 3. And that reflects it on our number line here. Now all we have to do is count up how many of each class there are. There's 1 with the scores between 2 and 4. There's 3 with scores between 5 and 7. 3 with scores between 8 and 10. There's 4 with scores between 11 and 13. 7, 10, and then 2. Now that we have our distribution table, our final step, step 4. Is that we go ahead and we draw the histogram. So I'm going to put in my frequency here. The largest frequency is 10. That's for scores between 17 and 19. So I don't have to go much higher than that. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I'll count up to 12. How's that? Two. Four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. And how you draw these histograms, or however you want to make your spacing, that's up to you as long as it's legible and it makes sense. Now, from the scores two to four, except I'm going to make the bars between consecutive lower class limits, so I'm going to go from two to five, and there's one. So here's our first bar. The way we interpret this bar, what is inside this bar? Well, all the values between 2 but less than 5. So that's how it's interpreted, 2 to less than 5. Well, what's less than 5? Well, that'll be 4. But that's how it's read. Then from 5 to 7, there's 3, but I'm going to go up to 8 here. And there's our next bar. Notice that the bars touch. They will always touch. Unless, of course, there isn't any data there that represents that class. Then I'm going to make a bar that's going to span from 8 to 11. And there's going to be 3. Then I'm going to go from 11 to 14. And there's going to be 4. And 
And certainly you can see that I'm using graph paper. I certainly endorse graph paper. It makes everything nice and clean. That way, if I make a mistake, um, it's easier to locate it because everything seems to be organized. Then from 14 to 17, there's seven. Then 17 to 20, there's 10. And then from 20 to the next lower class limit would be, be 23, that would be two. And there we go. That's the histogram that represents A, which is this data. It's got seven classes. Since it's got seven classes, that means it has to have a class with a three. Now let's try B. So we'll start with step one. We'll put in our, our axes here. I'm going to draw another one. And I'll start it off here. Notice again, I start off with the smallest data value, which is two, and I have to go to the largest, at least to the largest data value, which is 20, may go a little bit beyond because of the class width. So then for step two, we'll go ahead and we'll determine the class width. It's still a span from two to 20, so that's still 18, except rather than divide by seven, we're gonna divide by four. We have four classes, therefore we want four bars. This comes out to be four and a half. We want that to be right on a, a whole number, so we round this up to five. So the class width for this histogram here is going to be five. A class width of five will allow us to have four classes. Now we go to step three, in which we'll make our distribution, and we'll do the same idea. Here I have the, the quiz and the frequency up here. Start off with two, and then we count off five. One, two, three, four, five. That goes to seven. One, two, three, four, five. That goes to 12. So I'm putting in all my lower class limits right away so I can see what the span will be. And then we had five more. And that's going to be 17. So from here, this is going to be two to six. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 12, 30, 40, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We go ahead and we look through our data here. How many data values are between two and six? I counted up three. How many scores between seven and 11? I counted five, 10, and then 12. The last step here then is we're gonna go ahead and make our histogram. So I'm going to have to put in my ledger here, my tallest or my highest bar or my most frequent one will be 12. So I don't have to go much higher than that. Two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12.
Now I go ahead and put in my bars. From two to seven, there's three. From two to seven, there's three. Notice how these bars are much wider than these bars because the class width is wider. From seven to 12, there's five. From 12 to 17, don't forget I'm going between lower class limits, 12 to 17, there's 10. And then 17, if we went to the next lower class limit, that would be 22. So from 17 to 22, there will be 12. Again, notice how each bar does touch. The only time they won't touch is if there's no data uh, that would be represented there. Again, we interpret this bar here from 2 to less than 7. And obviously, what's less than 7? Well, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. There's 3 in here, 5 in here, 10 in here, and 12 in here. And there we go.